Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're previewing the 2024 Stanley Cup playoff matchup between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins. So we'll hop right in today, taking a look at a little bit of the playoff history between these two teams in recent years. Obviously, this is a, a historic matchup between the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Lots of history here. Three times in the past 10-ish years, this will be the fourth one in 11 years. So a lot to lot to play for for the Leafs. A lot of sort of magic and, and and problems that they've had in years past we'll see if they can overcome that obviously they finally broke the curse of the first round last year against tampa we'll see if they're able to sort of push that again this year make it out of the first round yet again obviously it's been a big problem for the leafs and we'll see if they can do it on this one but we'll now take a look at the playoffs so the trick to this one remember is 2013 2018 2019 and they'll talk about 2024 here so on all three of those series, Game 7, it came down to in the first round. Boston took all of those Game 7s. As well, you also got to remember that that 2013 one was the overtime winner where Boston came back from 4-1 to one down. And we'll see if, you know, the, the Demons still face the Toronto Maple Leafs in this series. I don't think it's quite as bad as it used to be, just considering the Leafs did make it out of the first round last year. But it always does sort of loom a little bit in Toronto media. And the media is really tough on the team as well. So that could be a little bit of a storyline heading in. Sort of you see some of the interviews with the players. A lot of them might be about, you know, you haven't beat them in a while. Do you think that they'll be able to win? You know, that might be a tough question for the Leafs to answer. And it's going to be a, an interesting series overall. You know, can the Leafs finally slay their demon, get there? They haven't won yet this year against the Bruins. We'll talk about that now. With the November 2nd win for the Boston Bruins and in a shootout, 3-2 to two was your final. December 2nd was 4-3 to three in overtime for the Bruins, as well as March, March 4th and March 7th were both... Um, four to one victories remember the four to one is sort of a storyline here but the both four to one victories for the boston bruins over the toronto maple leafs so when we look at that you know it's it's a tough thing to come back for for the leafs they are a team that you know sort of rides their success you got to look to their star players to really perform and they've they've sort of struggled a bit against the bruins and normally you know when the when you look to the leafs you're looking at a few key players one of them's obviously matthews you have also sort of guys like Nylander who might step up. Marner, all the guys that are getting paid, you know, 10 plus million. Tavares is another one to really step up in those key moments. Key moments. We will see what goes on there. But now let's take a look at a little bit of the injury report, right? When we look at, the, at both these teams, they have a couple key injuries. We'll start with the Bruins here with Derek Forbert. He is down in the AHL right now doing a little bit of skating. He, if, if Forbert can return to the Bruins, that'd be a huge, huge pickup. Right now, you know, forward sort of slides in on that top 4D pairing. I think when we look at it, you know, he's a really solid player that, you know, kind of could sway a series a little bit. Physical player. When we take a look at the Leafs, they sort of lack that a little bit. They got a little bit tougher, but at the same time, they haven't got tough enough to sort of go head-to-head -head against the Bruins in terms of toughness. So we'll see, you know, whether or not the Bruins are... If they can get forward back, if he slots into the lineup, or if he takes a little bit more time, that might be a really interesting thing to take note of in this series. As well, Justin Brazel, sort of bottom six forward for the Boston Bruins. He's been really solid and, and sort of slid in uh, halfway through the season for the Bruins, and he looked really good on that third and fourth line. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him slot back in if they can get him back. He's another guy that is sort of week to week, day to day. It's hard to pick up in the playoffs, right? Coaches aren't going to give you a lot. They aren't going to tell you what's wrong with people. So, you know, you can take it with a grain of salt. But I think if Brazao can get back into the lineup for the Bruins, that'd be a huge, huge pickup for them as well. So as Matt Patra is out, he was sort of injured around the time. The, the juniors around Christmas time. So he won't be returning to this series. He's out for the season. So a little bit of a, of, a, of a hard pickup for the Bruins. But I don't really think he'd be playing in the lineup that they're looking at to put out against the Leafs. We'll talk about that in just a second here. And now let's take a look at the Leafs. Because the Leafs have a couple day-to-day -day guys. You know, they benched a couple players yesterday to sort of give them some maintenance days. Could be an interesting one. You know, the Bruins did the same with Carlo and Maroon. That's an interesting sort of whether or not they're going to go and, and give Carlo the playing time, whether Maroon's going to be able to slot back in. He's a player I'm really looking for in the series to sort of thrive. We'll get to that in just a second as well. But the Leafs, so Bobby McMahon is another guy, but sort of that bottom six role, but he's been really, really solid for the Leafs all season, providing a little bit of that offensive touch that the Leafs need in their bottom six. Because when we look at the Leafs, right, they're a very upfront heavy team. If their stars can be stars, this series will likely be over. As well as Max Domi, uh, he's another guy day-to-day. -day. 
he'd be a, a sort of what the Leafs need to go up against the Bruins. You know, he's a physical player. He plays the game the right way. We'll see if he's able to slot back in, sort of provide a little bit of that skill combined with a little bit of that grit that Leafs really need to go up against the Bruins. That might be an interesting sort of player to keep note of. So is Kelly Yarncrocks, another one. He's a guy that's once again day-to-day. -day. Leafs have a lot of players that are day-to-day. -day, not too much to report on, but they, they have the potential to come back. For game one, all these guys would be huge pickups for the Leafs to be able to sort of slot in anywhere in that lineup. Yarncroft's a guy who could play on that second line in theory. I see him more sort of on that third line. He, you could argue fourth line, but I think he would be a really solid player on either any three of those lines. Be a huge pickup for the Leafs so they can get him back, as well as John Klingberg is out. He will not be returning with season-ending surgery as well. Now let's take a look at my X factor. So these are the players that I'm sort of looking for. Might not be the most, you know, talented of players. Some of them might be, but these are the players that really need to perform and I, and I think have the ability to change a series. So we'll take a look at the first one here for the Boston Bruins. I'm taking Pat Maroon, the recently acquired deadline acquisition for the Boston Bruins. And they really got him just to have that physical presence. Think about it. Lucic was sort of kicked off the team um, for some off ice stuff. So he's sort of out of the picture now maroon sort of his replacement and he's not necessarily the most skilled player in maroon but he's going to play that physical style he's going to get his teammates playing that physical style which is exactly what the bruins need to do so in my opinion pat maroon is the big, biggest player for the the bruins in the series to sort of turn the tide to be able to play physical against the leafs and really shut them down because we've seen it time and time again in all four of those games when the bruins played the leafs and they were able to be physical the bruins took control of the game and it was lights out from there. Might just be an interesting sort of series. We'll see whether or not Maroon's going to slide in. Obviously, you know, he's not necessarily the most skilled player on the Bruins. But, of course, it's still time to see if he slots in there. Another guy is Andrew Peak for the Boston Bruins. He's another guy who sort of plays that physical style. He's a defenseman. He's played on basically every pairing at this point. Top, top defensive pairing, second defensive pairing, third defensive pairing. Sort of just getting the, getting the reins down for the Bruins. He's another guy who I would very much look towards, especially in front of the net to clear defenders out to block shots that's what he's really he's, he's really known for is that defensive side and, and in my opinion he's a really good shutdown defender so he's another guy i want you to keep note of as well the last one here is danton heinen he's a guy that's sort of come out of nowhere in this in this season you know he started off as a pto deal in october and now he is where he is, and it's really impressive to see playing on the second line with Pasternak and Zaka. We'll see if he's going to stay on that line. I just presume he would, but this, that might be a big a big pickup for the Boston Bruins and for him to really take note of uh, in this series as he plays a very stylish game where it's it's all about, you know, I'm going to take care of the defensive side first, and then I'm going to go on the offensive attack. And that's what I really want you to look for in this series for the Boston Bruins. Those are my three key players to take note of, as well as Austin Matthews for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Your star players have to be star players. If the Bruins can successfully shut down Austin Matthews, this series is just about all but over. So, for the Bruins, if they can shut down Matthews, they're good. For the Leafs, key, key player to take note of. If Austin Matthews can get going, get hot at the right time, you know, he's 69 goals right now. Likely will go up to 70, I'd assume tonight. Maybe not, but at the time of making this video, he's at 69. We'll see if he plays or not. But he's a key player for the Leafs to really succeed in this series. As well as Tyler Bertuzzi, he's another one. Former Bruin who sort of got, the, got shafted at the free agent market. You know, he tried to come back to the Bruins. Bruins didn't offer him the deal anymore. He went to the Leafs. So for him, he's another key player. He plays that physical style that you're looking for in the playoffs. He's a guy that I'm really looking for in this series to step up and, and take that next step. As for the third one here, we're going to take Joel Edmondson for the Leafs. Defensive pairing, third pair, you know, not necessarily your best player on your defensive line but where he is is really effective is in his leadership he's been there he's done that he beat the Bruins in 2019 with the St. Louis Blues so we'll see if he can take that and really use it in this series to help the Leafs ahead now we'll flip it over here to the keys for this for the series for both teams for the Bruins is playing structured the Bruins can continue to play structured hockey not not let the Leafs sort of get out of hand use their skill if they can play a good structured style keep the puck out of the middle of the ice they'll do just fine here so as the bottom six has to be extremely effective for the boston bruins in the series if they want to be successful the bruins can't compete with the leafs on paper we'll stop there that's just how it works where the bruins sort of get their get their benefits in is, is in that sort of 
ability to play structured hockey, ability to sort of jump, dump, and chase, to play physical. And that's where that third line for the Bruins really, third and fourth line really for the Bruins sort of steps up. So these, that's another sort of, I, another sort of line that I'm looking for to, to really take that next step in the series. And they will be crucial to the Bruins' success here. As well, the last one is be physical. We've talked about it time and time again. If the Bruins can push around the Leafs, play physical, if they can get Ryan Reeves in the lineup, anytime Reeves is, is on the bench in the lineup, it's a benefit for the Boston Bruins. So if they can play physical, force Ryan Reeves into the lineup, the Leafs might have some problems in this series. As for the Leafs, let's take a look at the other side now. With Open it up. For the Leafs, they have to get it as wide open the ice as possible because that's when they're really good when they can use their skill and, and sort of keep the ice open use their passing use their shooting use their skating that's when the Leafs are really effective for the Bruins they need to shut that down and the second one here is really really important for the Leafs stars have to be stars if their star players all the guys that they're playing paying 10 plus million to don't show up it's all over for the Leafs. You've seen it time and time again. When the Leafs can't get their star players going, none of the team comes behind them. So that's a key part to sort of take note of for the Leafs. Is their stars going to be stars in this one? If they are, might be a tough game for the Boston Bruins. If they aren't, this series likely will go the other way and, and sort of benefit the Boston Bruins in that sense. As well, the final key is 10 the goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They have had some goaltending woes, we'll call it that. You know, Murray's a guy who I sort of left off the injured list. I don't know if he'll return. I don't even know if he'll play in the sort of lines up. Because right now they have Wall and Samsonov. Samsonov has been an absolute sieve as of late. You know, he took a break came back looked good for a couple games and went back to being a sieve so we'll see if he can come back wall's another guy you know i don't know who the goaltender is at this point because i don't think they've made their decision yet i think wall has to be just the way he's played consistent hockey but is it matt murray too you know it, it, it's just one of those things for the leaves they are unable to sort of figure out what they're going to be doing for their goaltending situations their goaltending has to tend the goal as best they can whoever goes out there because for the bruins they're looking for any opportunity to capitalize on a weak goaltender and the Leafs kind of have a weak goaltender right now. So we'll see, you know, who that goaltender is come playoff time. I'd assume it'd be Wall. That's my personal prediction. Could be Samsonov. Definitely something to take note of as well. Now let's take a look at the matchup and my final prediction. So we have for the offense, I think it's pretty well established that the Toronto Maple Leafs have a far better offense on paper than the Boston Bruins, Boston Bruins do. So, I mean, you can argue that in the comments if you want, but at the same time, you know, the Leafs do have the better offense. The defensive side, however, in my opinion, the Bruins do have the better defense. You know, they're able to push players out there, able to skate and all that. Compared to the Leafs, you know, the Leafs did have sort of bolstered up their defense core over the last couple of years. I still think Boston has that edge slightly. So we'll see, you know, sort of heading into the playoffs there, if anything else changes, and the last one is the goaltending. Key, key, key for both teams here. As normally the goaltending decides a series, right? We look back to years past with Frederick Anderson. You know, he, he was sort of there in those series. But at the same time, wasn't there quite enough to be able to sort of push the Leafs over the edge and, and make that next step to beating the Boston Bruins. So for me, overall, my final prediction is that I'm going to take the Boston Bruins in seven games. I think it's just the way that these two teams match up. It's going to be a good game. You know, both teams are going to have their A games. Their home ice advantage, I think, is going to come in crucial. The Bruins do have home ice advantage coming in that second spot in the Atlantic. So, I mean, obviously lots of lots of hockey to be played, lots of game for the Leafs to try and pick up, and we'll see if they can come out hot, because really whoever wins that first game likely will win the series at the end of the day, because it's all about setting the tone in these key series where it really could go either way. But with that, if you have made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like if you're subscribing, tell all your friends to comment down below your thoughts on the matchup between the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Leafs. Until next time, see you.